I'm Professor Nelson Sawal Kambo, uh, Professor Emeritus at Makere University, and I am one of the three leaders of this program. My colleagues, Dr. Andrea Beaton and Emi Okero, have been working in northern Uganda for nearly a decade. And they have found out that rheumatic heart disease is very common in northern Uganda. And so that raised uh, curiosity and interest in working on a program specifically which deals with rheumatic heart disease. And this follows uh, actually the World Health Organization uh, declaration which encourages countries to work together with ministries of health to make sure that rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease are eliminated in the world. I'm called Emi Okello. I'm a, a senior consultant cardiologist uh, and I'm the head of the Department of Adult Cardiology. I'm also the director of the Rheumatic Heart Disease Collaborative in Uganda, where I oversee uh, research on rheumatic heart disease. So rheumatic heart disease, uh, it has three words, rheumatic heart disease. Rheumatic means that it's a disease associated with the joint that eventually affects the heart. And it starts usually with the uh, infection of the throat caused by a common bacteria that is common in children who are between 5 and 15 years of age, but over time they eventually develop heart disease, especially the heart valves, which are like little doors between the four rooms or the chambers of the heart. And these little doors normally, in a normal person, they allow blood to move from one room to another. In a person with rheumatic heart disease, that door is damaged, so it either becomes too stiff and doesn't open, or it doesn't close, so blood moved backwards, instead of going in one direction, it goes backwards. Rheumatic heart disease affects about 40 million people worldwide, and about 350,000 people die from rheumatic heart disease every year. That's a lot of people, if you imagine 350,000 from, this is from Africa, South America, South East Asia, and some parts of Europe. Unfortunately, when you look in the detail, you see that most of these are coming from developing countries like ours. Uh, for all diseases, we need uh, local questions. We need to ask questions of how to, I mean, how does this disease present in our environment? What is unique about it? For you to be able to solve. And that's how impact comes in. And so the Heart Institute uh, partnered with the Makere University to obtain this grant to build capacity. So we are training master students, we are training people who already obtained their masters, who are doing career research, we are training people who are doing PhDs so that they are thinkers and they will be thinking around rheumatic heart disease. Why is it so common? Why is it still common? Uh, how can we improve on the crowding situation? How can we detect rheumatic heart disease earlier? And we see that rheumatic heart disease affects women disproportionately. Usually two out of three, of, if you go anywhere and there's rheumatic heart disease, two out of three will be women. And we want to find out why. Why does rheumatic heart disease affect more women than men? and how do these women fare? So all these questions are going to be asked by our uh, colleagues who are doing research and supported by the IMPACT program, uh, led by Professor Nelson Sawan Kambo and uh, uh, myself and Dr. Andrew Beaton from Cincinnati. And what we're trying to do is eventually in five years to have this uh, you know, center of excellence for rheumatic heart disease research in Uganda, but also extending to Africa, to the rest of Africa, of thought leaders who can come together to get solutions to uh, the rheumatic heart disease problem. Across the world, there are many people, or a number of people, who know how to look after people who have got rheumatic heart disease. Surprisingly, even in advanced countries like the United States, there are experts there in this disease. And therefore, to move faster in our work, we thought it important that we should collaborate with 
wherever the experts are, not only in Uganda, but also uh, with other countries. And in this particular case, we have very strong collaboration with colleagues from the United States and we tap into their expertise. My name is Andrea Beaton and I'm a pediatric cardiologist at Cincinnati Children's Hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio in the United States. Rheumatic heart disease has been my research focus for the last 10 years, again, in close collaboration with the investigators at the Uganda Heart Institute. And this disease is so fascinating and we're so passionate about it because it's a largely preventable cardiac disease. We have strategies that can reduce the burden, but we haven't been able to get those strategies out to the population. And there's an essential need for new research in this disease. So most of what we know about rheumatic heart disease came from the mid-1900s in historical trials in high-income countries like the United States. We, we both don't know that those same strategies will work now, and we don't know how to roll them out in new situations. And so there's this incredible opportunity to build knowledge that could change the paradigm of rheumatic heart disease globally. My name is Dr. James Kaima. I am a senior lecturer at Macquarie University College of Health Sciences in the Department of Medicine, and I'm a consultant cardiologist at the Uganda Heart Institute. And my role in the IMPACT uh, RHD project is as a, a investigator and faculty. Incidentally, the, the whole cardiology uh, in the healthcare uh, co co uh, continuum and needs to improve their knowledge and practice in rheumatic heart disease. When you start with, say, the community healthcare workers, they need to know about rheumatic heart disease uh, and what causes it, because that's where the primary prevention starts. We've identified gaps in how uh, patients are diagnosed uh, when they get uh, rheumatic uh, heart disease. So we think that uh, this training program will contribute an improvement uh, of diagnosis of uh, rheumatic heart disease through research. Uh, we know that uh, the uh, access to surgery is very limited for a few um, lucky individuals presently, and we hope that uh, there would be research in better ways of accessing a surgery. And we hope that uh, the work uh, done uh, in this uh, project will eventually have an impact on the way the patients are managed. Uh, that I would improve their outcomes. One of the most important things that we have done in the last 10 years is to find out that instead of waiting for children or young adults affected by rheumatic heart disease to first come to hospital when they're in heart failure, we can actually use scanning machines, ultrasound, which we use, which normally is used out there to check for swellings or masses in the body or even for observing a baby while a mother's expecting. But the specialized one called ECHO, an echocardiogram, uh, is used to scan the heart and we have found out that if we go to schools to look for these children at risk, these children who are between 5 and 18, we can actually find them before they develop symptoms, before they even know that they have rheumatic heart disease. We are now able to go to schools, scan. When we get those children early enough and place them on penicillin, which is widely available and cheap, and we keep them on this penicillin, for five to 10 years, they go back to normal without needing any surgery. So that's where we're now putting the effort. But in the hospital like here, we're still treating the ones who are missed, who come with severe disease. But on the research side, we're putting a lot of effort to detect these uh, children and young adults early enough so that we give them penicillin and then they get back to normal. They don't need surgery, they don't need to be admitted in hospital. So it's a key, key thing and uh, I think two or three of our PhD students will be expanding on that work and that should be.